Right. Better get down to the basement, I suppose. Not the safest place in the building, is it? Some of those walls are pretty thick down there, Mr Hughes. Yeah, a lot of good that'd do if the whole bloody building collapsed on top of us, I must say. Do you think the bombing will get worse, Mr Hughes? Oh, I think a lot of things will get worse before they get better, son. Come along, down we go. <sighs> Namely, being cooped up for eight hours with Messrs Smithers, Jackson and Conway. <laughs> a motley crew we are, eh? Clambering about in dungarees and tin hats hoping to stop the second fire of London with a bucket of sand and a stirrup pump that wouldn't give you a decent wash. It's better than nothing, I suppose. <sighs> well, what do you bet, Raymond, that Smithers says as I open the door? Well, Hughes, certain the building's empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hughes, certain the building's empty. Uh, yes. No one here but ourselves, eh, Raymond? <laughs> yes, Mr Smithers, the building is empty. Stirrup pumps are in position, sand buckets filled, and we're all fed, watered, and fully clad, and in our right minds. At least I am. For God's sake, don't be an old woman. It is my job to make sure everything is as it should be. Now, Mr. Drayton, you signed the duty book. What? If you would be so kind as to tear yourself away from that novel you're reading, I asked if you'd signed the duty book. Yes. Oh, no, I haven't. No. Uh, anyone got a pen? You should have brought a fountain pen with you, together with a notebook. You can get a nice thick one from Woolworths for a penny. Oh, for God's sake, must we go through this palaver every night? Damn it, there are only six of us. We all know we're here. Question is, are we all there? Prancing around in tin hats, playing with stirrup pumps. May I remind you, Jackson, that it is 1940 and there's a war on? Well, I'll tell you something. If nothing happens by two o'clock, I'm going home. What? It is our duty night, Jackson, and here we all stay until daybreak. There's a full moon tonight, and that could well mean an air raid, a heavy one. If this place goes up in flames, it'll be our responsibility. Rubbish. If incendiaries fall on the roof, they'll most likely burn themselves out. There's nothing we can do apart from sit here and wait for someone to dig us out. Always supposing we aren't flattened. Mm. You forget that there's one who watches over us. So long as we put our trust in him, all will be well. <laughs> the perpetual optimist. Here's your intelligence, man. At this moment, people are dying violently all over the world, and he isn't doing a bloody thing about it. And we're flirting with death every time we go up on the roof during an air raid. Look here, you I stupid. have formed a philosophy that I would advise you to follow. Oh, oh. Cool. So long as the war continues, look upon yourselves as already dead. What? Well, then, every day that finds you still breathing is an unmerited bonus. I think that's an unduly pessimistic viewpoint. Oh, God, do you have to start, Conway? Why don't you keep quiet and let them get on with it? Like me. I hope I'm entitled to express my views as well as anyone here. Democracy is what this war's about. Mm. As I was saying, I think what Mr Drayton says is unduly pessimistic. A Christian has no fear of death. As he knows, it's only a doorway to paradise, a place of eternal bliss. Just a moment. If this place is so good, what are you hanging round for? Are we to understand you're looking forward to dying? That is a stupid question. Of course I want to live as long as possible. It would be a mortal sin to wish otherwise. What I intended to imply was simply that under the circumstances... Here they come. You won't be going home tonight, Jackson. No. All right, lads, you know what to do. Grab your gas masks and put your helmets on and then to your posts. Young Raymond, you will man the telephone. Come on, our best foot forward up on the roof. No, oh, don't panic. There could be anything up to ten minutes between the siren sounding and the arrival of the first planes. Then the damn things have got to find us, which in all probability they never will. So calm down and stop prancing around like a fussy old hen. Now, look here, Jackson. I've had just about enough of you. You're a damn oh, stupid, stupid little... little... What would the God Box meeting say? You know, I wonder why you take the trouble to come here if this is the only attitude you can take. It's <laughs> a question I often ask myself. Probably because watching you getting hot and bothered is better than a tonic. Breaks the bloody monotony. I do not get hot and bothered! Oh, please, gentlemen. This continuous bickering is not conducive to peace of mind, which all of us badly need in these trying times. Now, might I suggest that if you can't address one another in a, in a civilised manner... You declare a non-speaking truce. But he started it. He always does. Everyone knows that. Shall we get ready and take up our positions? Unless I am mistaken. Enemy planes are already overhead. Yes, you're right. Right, come on up the stairs, everyone. Oh. Oh. Go down. I've left my gloves behind. Hold on a moment. Oh, no, you don't, Jackson. We haven't time to waste. Raymond? Yeah, OK, I'll get them. Where are they? On the shelf by my bunk. Well, hurry up, Raymond. We haven't got all night. I can't see them. 
That was close. And getting nearer. Made it then. Christ, I thought my time had come. God saved us. I said a prayer when I heard that one coming, and he must have heard me. The pity he didn't turn the bloody thing round and send it back to where it came from. As it is, where do we go from here? Look, you notice something? What? The light's still on. Only just. Yeah, but it is still on. The bomb must have glanced off the outer wall. Oh, oh. The hole is blocked by a fall from higher up. Sooner or later, the ARP boys will take us out. Oh, oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, I think we must face facts. Huh? The raid is still going on. I think it must be an extremely heavy one. Now, it's quite possible that no rescue bib will be made until after daybreak. If not, later. Now, in the meantime, it may have escaped your notice that the ventilation system is no longer working. They are maybe coming down to us through the roads, but I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, don't worry, lad. We'll manage somehow. <laughs> Having been spared from the blast, it's inconceivable that we should suffocate. <laughs> hey, it might be inconceivable, but it's quite possible. <laughs> Oh, can't you stop that boy oh, sniveling? Come on. Things are no worse for him than for the rest of us. Oh, I can't agree with that. The situation is far worse for him. Most of us have got, what, ten years left? The very best. But he might be good for another sixty. He has every right to mourn. Oh, damn that for a tale. I intend to hang on to whatever time's left to me. I propose we start shifting some of that rubble outside and... Try to get through the side wall. My very thought. And if we get properly organised, it might be possible to break through in time. What do you say, Mr. Drayton? Well, I certainly keep us occupied. He may be successful, but <coughs> we'll we'll have to move with extreme care, or the whole lot will be down on top of us. Right now, let's get cracking. Come on, Raymond, stir yourself, lad. Now you take my box of matches and light all the hurricane lamps. We'll need them when we tunnel through all that rubble. Uh, uh, yes, 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 Mr. Smith. Right. Now, Jackson. You have a shot at trying to raise someone on the telephone. You've got some bloody well, you never know. Electricity's still coming through, so the phone could still be working. <laughs> oh, what the hell are you doing, boy? Can't you get those hurricane lamps lit? No, I, I can't help it, Mr. Hughes. I'm, 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 sh I'm shaking all over. God help England if they ever get you in the army. You'd be Hitler's secret weapon. Oh, uh, come on, Raymond. Come on, come on. They don't know we're going to Come on. I'm suffering for shock. I guess... Wrap yourself up in these blankets and keep warm. There's, there's enough of us here to do what can be done without your help. Oh, hello. Hello. This is the fire watching post at Mansfield and Hedges. Listen, will you? We are trapped in the basement. Oh, for God's sake, let me get a word in. Hello? Hello? What's the trouble? Have you got someone? Well, I'm not talking to myself, am I? Some girl or other who keeps on asking if there's anyone there. Seems I can hear her, but she can't hear me. Yeah, give it to me. Oh. Hello. Hello, this is the firefighting post. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can... What's happened? Oh, I'm telling you, she can't hear us, but we can hear her. Yeah, the line went dead. Never mind, we'll try again later. Come on, let's get to work. Oh, there's not a hope of getting through this lot. 
The slightest movement will bring the ceiling and whatever's above yeah. it down on us. Yeah, but we must try. We can't give up now. Oh, please yourself. Let's say I haven't warned you. We're not doing too badly. Six steps are clear. There's a small cavity here in the left wall. Oh, hold the lamp steady, for God's sake. Drayton. Drayton, what are you doing? What's the matter? There's a body here. Body? Are you sure? Well, I mean, how could that be? Well, look. See for yourself. But who the hell is it? Yeah, exactly. Someone standing by the wall outside when the bomb fell? No, that's not possible. No, they would have been blown to bits. Got the full blast. No, he must have been on the inside. On the stairs at the time. What the hell are you talking about, man? There was only us on the stairs. There couldn't have been anyone else. Well, the, yeah. the body's still warm. It can't have been dead for more than an hour. Maybe he fell fr from above. Well, the ceiling's still intact, so he can't have come from that direction. Look, I, I don't think there's much point in going on with this fruitless task. I, I suggest we leave off for a while and give the matter our full consideration. Raymond's asleep. Mm. Lucky sod. I'm going to try the phone again. Maybe whatever was wrong with it has been put right. Hello? Hello? Oh, damn it. Not a dicky bird. Guess the exchange has been hit. My God, they're going hammer and tongs out there tonight. Perhaps we're in the best place after all. The air doesn't seem to have got any worse. The light has. Doesn't seem as bright as it was, or am I imagining it? Uh, there's one point I'd like to clear up. Smithers, yeah. were you at the top of the stairs? Did you have the door open? No, I, I had my hand on the handle, but the moment I heard the bomb, I let go and tumbled down the stairs with the rest of you. Yes, that's what I thought. I suppose there's, there's no way the door could have been blown open and then closed again before the wall collapsed. Huh? No. I, I, I was thinking that if someone had been sheltering in the upper passage, they might have been, uh, what, sort of blown in? Well, it's most improbable. I mean, if the door was opened by the blast, debris would have kept it open. I mean, yeah. what are you getting at, Drayton? I have arrived at the stage where the possible must be discarded and the improbable considered. Now, having confirmed that the door could not have been opened, and that there was no one on the stairs except ourselves, I am reluctantly, very reluctantly, drawn to only one conclusion. And what's that? Gentlemen, I am going to ask you to consider the possibility that one of us is dead. I always thought you were potty, Drayton, a bloody crank, out of touch with reality. Oh, by God, you've gone too far this time. All right, then offer me another more sane explanation. You can't, eh? No, no, none of you can. Now, believe me, I would have kept this uh, diagnosis to myself, but whoever it is that has left his earthly body back there on the stairs must be made to realise his position. Oh. No, no, consider the possible fact that it is you lying out there. That's the horrible part of the entire business. Whoever it is doesn't know... He's dead. Look, just suppose you're right. Yeah. How can you explain why a dead man should walk around with a normal body when the one he's been born with is lying under several tons of bricks? Oh, all, all right, all right. I, I, I will try to answer that as best I can. Now, it is quite possible that we all have two bodies. Oh. One of dense material that we use in this life and the other that, uh, for want of a better description, is comprised of higher vibrating atoms. When there is a violent death, Shock can result in an unnatural phenomenon. The vibrations can be slowed down and, in rare cases, exactly match those of the defunct body. Look, hold on a moment. Look, I can quite well see, if that is the case, the poor bleeder doesn't know he's yeah, dead. Right. But how long does he carry on like this? I'd say 
If we can't settle this problem beforehand, devibrating won't start until someone from the outside enters this room. What happens then? The secondary body will become invisible, but will still be here. Become what is commonly called a ghost, that can be seen by certain people when the conditions are favourable. Rubbish! Exactly. All of you must be mad just to listen to him. When you're dead, you're dead. Finished. Do you fully understand what he's saying? One of us is a bloody ghost. I mean, honestly, think about it. Who? <laughs> Go on, way. Yeah. All 16 stone of you. According to Mr. Drayton, you could be a spook. Or you, Smithers. Ah. Far cry from your nightgown, heart playing, angel wing paradise. Huh? And what about young Raymond over here? He's snoring like a pig, but I suppose you haven't ruled him out. As a matter of fact, at the moment, you are my number one suspect. My what? That might be why you could hear the girl on the telephone, but she couldn't hear you. This is a local affair. Figuratively speaking, you wouldn't exist outside this shelter. But my pulse is beating 13 to the dozen. I'm solid, warm, with blood streaming through my veins. If I was to hit you, you'd feel my fist. How the hell can I be dead? I have just explained that. I'm not dead. I'm not! If there's any truth in all this, it must be one of you. Smithers, you are higher up the stairs than the rest of us. I bet it's you. Come to think of it, you've been acting strangely since we came back down here. Admit it, man. You must know. No. No, it can't be me. I mean, I didn't lose consciousness for a single second, and, and I'm bruised all over. Wait a minute. Conway, you were up first, full of energy, and so far as I can see, not a scratch on you. It must be you. No. If that's my body out there, then my legs must have shrunk. Mine are like tree trunks. Right, Mr Drayton? Gentlemen, this is getting us nowhere. Earlier, I advised you to regard yourselves as already dead. Now I am suggesting you do just that, literally. Let us all say, I am the one. Accept that you are a dead man still functioning among five live ones. Then whoever it is will be free. Free to do what? Free to leave this place. Oh. Raymond's awake, I see. Well, now, how do you feel, lad? Oh, I feel... I feel funny. All woozy. Is there any chance of a cup of tea? <laughs> You've got some hope. Can't think why you should feel funny. You've been sleeping your head off while the rest of us have been sweating blood. I had a strange dream. Somehow I got out of here and was walking down Canberra Street. Bombs were falling everywhere, but they didn't seem to bother me. It was as though I knew that they couldn't hurt me. Then I came to the ARP post and went down the steps into the basement. There were several men seated round a table, including Mr Sinclair, who's in charge of our office. But when I tried to explain what had happened here, he ignored me. Do you remember leaving the ARP post? No. No, I suddenly wanted to be back here with all of you. Then I was just outside, looking at a great pile of rubble that completely hid the entrance. There was a man waiting. Can... Can you describe this man? I think so. Although he wasn't like anyone I'd ever seen before. I had the impression he was dressed in black. A kind of long robe. But it was his face that demanded my full attention. So white. It almost shone. And the eyes were very large. Very dark and bright with... Well... Pity, intelligence, knowledge, I don't know, perhaps all three. Then he said, only I don't think he said anything. I, I just heard the words in my head. Don't go back in there. You belong in another place. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Doubtless you have no reason to believe that the experience is anything more than a 
particularly vivid dream. Oh, no, of course not. No. What else could it be? Oh, what indeed. I must tell you that there is a body half buried under the ruins of the outer wall and there is no way its presence can be explained unless it is one of us. Is this some kind of joke? Not of our making, lad. This damned business is getting madder by the second. We'll settle this matter once and for all. Do what should have been done in the first place. Dig the damn body out and try to find out who it belongs to. Very well. We'll do what must be done. But every one of you must be prepared. Accept my word that the man I will name is the one. No, for an indisputable fact that you are dead and have no right to be in this place. Now, oh, should the body be mine, I will not linger. That much I can promise. Well, Mr Drayton, what did you find out? Whose body lies in there? Under it, I found this. It is a pocket edition of Pilgrim's Progress on the inside of the front cover is inscribed to Harold Smithers from his good friend Arthur Brown. It's you, Smithers. You're dead, man. Dead! And oh, most merciful God, I'm alive! May I be forgiven. I didn't... did not believe. Uh... <laughs> He's gone. He's not here. Well, that was to be expected. He knew at last and accepted. There was no way he could remain after that. He's free. Maybe as time passes, we'll try to believe that none of this happened. Pretend we were all suffering from shock, illusions. And perhaps that'll be for the best. Raymond, it's all over. Sounds as if they're digging away up there. That means you'll soon be home. Getting yourself wrapped round powdered egg and tin bacon, eh? How'd you feel about that? <sighs> Fine, I think. But are you sure it's all over? I, I, I still feel funny. Bound to. We all feel funny. Why do we not all crawling on all fours? You must forget all about this. Take Mr Hughes' advice. Pretend none of it happened. Ten minutes or less should find them down here. I bet they'll be surprised to find any of us alive. I suppose there's no point in us giving him a hand. What's the matter, Drayton? What are you looking so miserable about? Well, I fear I have to tell you. Well, what's the matter, man? When I was in the hole, you may remember there was a fall of rubble. It was soon after you left and I continued on my own. Well, that fall uncovered another section of the wall. It also revealed four more bodies. So, there are four more bodies. There's been a damn great air raid and there must be quite a few bodies lying round. Please, don't make me spill it out. You know... I'm not going to listen. You're stark raving mad. We've humoured you over Smithers, but this is too much. No, I... I don't understand. What in God's name are you talking about? He... He's suggesting that we've been playing the wrong game. Not who's the ghost, but who's the live one. And the answer is himself, right, Drayton? Never mind me, just believe. Accept your condition and go. Go. Go before they break through. Don't get trapped down here, be forced to haunt this place forever. Okay, I was saved by a fluke. Through, you all fell on top of me, and then, then the blast lifted you off again. That man, the one in my dream, he's out there beckoning. Please don't let me go. Please. The lights going out. Hey, Harry, get 
catch some light over here. I think there's someone alive. I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm alive. It's no good, Raymond. The light's gone. It's pitch black. You got them lights, Harry? Yeah, aye, that's it. Yes, I'm right. There is someone. Here, mate. Give me your hand. That's it. You're the only one left. I... I think so. Merciful God. I think so. <laughs> 